Hello and welcome to today's show. This is one video in a series. The subject of this video is custom engraving an AR-15 lower receiver. So come on back. As with any video dealing with firearms. The purpose of this video is entertainment, not instruction. There is no warranty, either written or implied, and none shall be inferred. Now, before we talk about some aspects of doing some custom and laser engraving, uh, we probably ought to take a look at how firearms are marked. Now, this is a firearm. This is a hollow, empty receiver. Just the casting. It's a finished casting. And according to ATF, Gun Control Act, all these wonderful things, even though this may be cast by a different manufacturer, it is not complete until the machining takes place. And one of the things, if you've heard of the 80% receiver, that's an industry term, not, a, not a, a federal law term, they have decided that it's not a finished receiver if it cannot accept the fire control group, and the hammer, and the springs of that nature. There's actually a definition of what it, what that is, what a firearm is. So the way a, um, ATF views these unfinished castings is it's not a firearm, and so they can transfer it back and forth without using a 4473. Now, this is a finished product. I imagine it went to a manufacturer. They milled all the piece parts out to mill specs, and when they did that as a registered manufacturer, licensee, they had to place the name of the company, the city, the state, the caliber, and the model number. That's a requirement. So we've talked a little bit about the standard text and how they've done it. Now, if I flip it over, and we're going to reposition this, and you might have to go through a film edit while I get this in place, Here I see, here I present for you a custom graphic that was laser etched by Man Venture Outpost in Pennsylvania. They did a good job. And this is, this is something that wasn't preloaded into the system, so it, it's defined as a custom. I would advise you to make sure that whatever you put in, you have you know, your legal rights to do so. Uh, but they burned this down. I told them it was to be engraved for the purpose of taking paint so that it burned down a little bit deeper. And as you see in this, it's fairly intricate. And this was my first um, attempt at this. What I noticed is the line width that I used was 1 seconds minimum. I believe I should have allowed for a little bit more space between valleys so that between features I'm like 364 because right in here you can't really quite make it out where the rays come together and the cross up on top of the crown is another cross and it's just a little too tight there's not enough material left high that by the time it was burned and then this is, has been seracoded by the time it's been blasted and all that it's kind of lost that definition so if you don't try to get too fine and too detailed, it works pretty good, but there's no fault of the, uh, of the laser engraver at this point. It's just my design when I, when I drew this up to replicate an old fraternal uh, sign. That's the way it turned out. Now you see that the text of Ben says, you know, it's just a standard at least 1 16th because I figure that's if that's the NFA requirement for marking a firearm, that's a good height to make it. And I was able to draw this out upload it, uh, MVO or Man Venture Outpost was able to load it into the machine, fix it, adjust it, and do a little bit of positioning work to make sure it looked going to be going to be just fine, and then burn it down because you don't, don't get to put it back, right? Now, I'm going to reposition this camera again and try to show what I believe we did, a layering effect. And I'm going to get that about like that. We may do a cut because as I focus this in, it may overshoot. And I'm very close with, with a, a fairly um, 
Uh, okay. Uh, one little cut there so I can get this position, get the work position right. Now one of the things that, that clearly looks to me like it's been done is I visually detect a layer and then a deep one. So I, it's like it's been cut into two layers, a wide layer and a narrow layer to, to kind of approximate that nice little roll saddle shape we had on the, the roll die. So these edges are fairly sharp and, and visually distinct. But when I look at it with my little eye, I spy a deep, narrow cut to get the, get, get the depth out of it, and then a wider kind of shouldered cut up above. So there's some work that goes in to doing something like this. Again, like I say, those are just my tips. You may do as you see fit. Now we're getting ready to do another little cut while I reposition the work, and I'll show you uh, the work that a different engraver has done for me on this particular firearm. If you desire to have a short barreled rifle instead of a, a pistol, they're very similar, but one of them is a felony if you get caught with it and you don't have a registered weapon, there's a process to go by it, which is a different video. This one is engraving. And as I had this done, I brought it back, looked at it, decided whether or not to pursue that particular aspect of it because if you've never done something before, sometimes that learning curve can be a bit. But I used a different vendor. This one is Philip and his uh, lovely wife out of Michigan, Stephanie. Had a little brain, brain lock, couldn't remember the spouse's name. Philip and Stephanie Muma out of Veritas Machining, LLC, out of Michigan. I think they did a very good job. One of the things I liked about them is with the NFA text, they give you a little list. And basically it says, all right, this is what I want. This is my first chosen location. If for some reason you've got too many text, uh, too many characters long or something, I can't put it there because uh, you have to maintain 1 16th character height and you must maintain 3 thousandths deep. So this is my first choice. This is my second choice, my third choice, and my fourth choice. So I like to give them the option. Their form actually requires it, and you can talk to them and see where they can put it. Uh, on the outside of a magwell, but I already have my custom, my custom graphic there. So on the inside of the lip, the funnel lip of the lower receiver on magazine well, along the sides above safe and fire along the uh, fire control group well there's on that side the other side uh, or along what a lot of people are doing is they're running it inside the uh, trigger i guess just trigger hole i don't know what you call it. the trigger hole is actually in the casting but the trigger finger uh, finger guard trigger loop on each side of the casting they uh is a popular place to put this. Uh, I kind of like to have it all in one place rather than having one line on one side, one on the other. And the question was, could Philip and Stephanie lay out my graphics, maintaining my sixteenth of an inch character height and three thousandths deep if I did it a little bit different? And what I want to do was put it widthwise. And that depends on, of course, the font and the text itself how many characters I have now this is my my name my city and my state because part of this manufacturing bit is it was manufactured as a firearm and there's a little bit of confusion amongst the ATF industry operations and NFA and what the manual says and what the law says and then what the rules say and I'm not getting into the law of it but most people just acquiesce to any level of confusion and put their name on it in addition to now what you have to be careful that you don't do is modify a serial number because that is basically the birth certificate of that firearm so you can't obscure that i don't know if it's obscuration is, is an issue but you can't make it obscure you can't scratch it out you can't mess with it you can't modify it you can't add extra letters to it so it already has that the manufacturer made it as a firearm if 
the, the way I understood NFA people is when you make it into a, a registered class three firearm, that what you're doing is you're the new maker and they want you to put your name on it. Although I'm not sure how that fits in with the statute as far as traceability, considering we already have a serial number in the manufacturer and we have the transfer on a 4473. It may be that the 4473 transactions are not fully recorded and they want to know when we have it. But still on your paperwork, you put that same manufacturer serial number and identification. When you register it, it looks like that would work but I'm not going to fight with the ATF and it takes them months at a time to do the paperwork. So uh, that's the extent of my video on engraving. I would caution people to use no finer line than one as far as a graphic, Magwell graphic. Probably keep it around 130 seconds, maybe 364, somewhere around that area. Keep about 364 distance between high spots and low spots so that if you get a little wear and a little uh, blasting, if you want to have it seracoded, that's a different video, that you can do that and still maintain the level of detail that you want. Just don't try to make it too, too fancy. Okay? We appreciate you, and there will be another video showing up after this one.